Hello, welcome to Jack and Well, and it comes much, much easier. So today in this video, I'm going to be teaching you standard derivative. I'll, I'll be displaying the question at the end of the video. So make sure you give your answer in the comment section. Now, I can see this standard derivative are shortcuts and they have been proven to solve the differential equations of various functions. So we'll be starting with the first one. Suppose we have a function y equal to a x raised power of n. So this is a function. Usually, for us to solve this, we need to go through the process of the first principle of differentiation, first order differentiation. But with standard derivative, we are giving a formula. We are giving a template, like I said, like a shortcut. And that template means it, it says dy over dx is equal to a n x raised power of n minus 1. So it's as simple as that. When you have a function like this, identify your a identify your x and then substitute into this as easy as that so let's solve an example suppose we have y equal to 12x cubed we have a function and we have been asked to find the differential equation of this function so dy over dx from this we have our a to be 12 and our n to be 3 so now uh, the differential equation will be a times n. Our a is what? 12 times our n is what? 3. So that will be the coefficient of x. Then after that, we'll have our x times x. Then the new power will now be n minus 1. Uh, n here is 3. So we're having 3 minus 1. So solving for that dy over dx. The differential equation of this function will be equal to 12 times 3 is 36. 36x, 3 minus 1, 2. So we have 36x squared. Moving to the next example. So we'll be given this function now. We'll be next to find the derivative of the function, the y over the x. So what we um, in solving this, we'll take them individually. So the y over the x for this, remember a times n, 3 times 4, is 12. Then we have our x. Then the power will be n minus 1, which is 4 minus 1, 3. Then we'll move to the next one. Minus a times n, 2 times 5 is what? 10. we we'll have our x. Then our new power will be what? n minus 1, which is 5 minus 1, 4. Then coming to this, and let this not bother you. Let it not bother you. So we have plus. Let's break it down before we solve. We have 18x raised to the power min minus 3. So according to the law of indices, we can rewrite this as this. So this becomes our a and this becomes our n. So we'll be having 18 times minus 3 is minus 56x. Then we have minus 3 minus 1. Remember it's n raised to the power minus 1 and our n is minus 3. That's n minus 1. So we have dy over dx solving for that to be 12x cubed. We don't need to do anything to this one since we've already um, differentiated them. That's 10x raised to the power 4. Then plus times minus is minus. Now, if you don't know how to go minus, I've done a video already. I've done a shot on this. So the link is in the description. Make sure you check it out. So we have minus 56x. Now minus 3 minus 1 gives us minus 4. And so this is the derivative of this function. So it's as easy as that. So moving on to the second standard derivative, when we are given a function y equal to sine ax, the standard derivative is given as this, a cos ax. So now it's as simple as this, when we are given y equal to sine 4x and we are asked to differentiate, the differential equation of this function will be a. What's our a? Our a is 4. 4 cos ax. What's our a? 4. So we're having 4 cos 4x. We are giving y equal to sine 25x. So it's as simple as that. We have y equal to sine so 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 x. The y over dx is the variable as a coefficient cos. Now from sine, it changes to cos. 
cos ax. Okay, so the third derivative, if we have y equal to cos ax, the standard derivative is the y over dx equal to minus a sine ax. Now let this not confuse you. Let's solve you the question. If you have y equal to cos 4x, and we have to find the standard derivative of that, it becomes minus a. What's our a for? Now it changes from cos to sine. A, our, our a is for x. So it's as simple as that. We've come to the end of this video. And my advice to you is that as much as possible, try to solve as much questions as you can. The more you solve, the more you get a mastery of each and every of these standard derivatives. In order for it not to confuse you. If you're here watching this video and you're yet to subscribe, make sure you hit on the subscribe button to get notified for further uploads. Thanks for watching.